What's up, .NET developers? Do you love the CLI and the extensibility that it brings to building .NET apps? Well, in this video, we're going to go over some of the CLI improvements that are coming in .NET 8 right here on learning .NET and C Sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of what's new in .NET and C Sharp with Isaac. We're going to be talking about all sorts of the cool things that are coming out in .NET 8 and C Sharp 12, all the way up to .NET Conf, which is in November of 2023. And if you're liking the sort of .NET videos here, be sure to comment down below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. And let me know what you're saying, because I want to see all the cool stuff we're building with .NET 8 as it cuts closer and closer to release. Right, so if you've been watching the videos, I've done a lot of CLI stuff, because I love the CLI. I think it makes me um, a better developer. I think that it makes me a more productive developer. And I want to showcase some of the cool things that are coming on .NET 8, specifically around CLI tooling to make our lives as .NET developers a bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit a couple of uh, things that I've seen that have came out. And I'd love to hear if some of these things are useful for you, some of these things that um, you didn't even know that you could use these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen really quick. And as you can see, I'm in the CLI. I'm going to be in the CLI for the most part of this video. So I'm inside of a temp directory here. And what I want to do is I want to showcase some of the new CLI features that are coming out in .NET 8. So let's, let's first, let's do this. Let's actually create like a new project. So .NET new, let's just call it a console. But I'm going to actually create a .NET, uh, .NET 7 project. So I'm going to specify framework. And then I'm going to do net 7.0. And then I'm going to specify an output and let's just call it net seven. So what this is going to do, this is going to create a .NET seven uh, project. So let's just, we can actually go in there, net seven and then run this. So if um, if we've been building uh, .NET applications, .NET 5, .NET 6, .NET 7, if you do a .NET publish, um, the uh, directory that gets created, the configuration, it's set to default as debug. So if you want to specify like the release folder, you'd have to add additional things. So let's see what that looks like. So if I do like a .NET build, right? So .NET, actually not .NET build, sorry, .NET publish. And then let's just, so let's see what the output is of that. So if we take a look at that, as you can see, zoom in a little bit as you can see here it's the directory is nets is debug net 7 so that's that's okay i mean i think one thing that we can also do is if we can specify that we can change that and then have it be release and then as you can see here it creates a release directory right so you have that additional argument that you need to pass in so in dotnet 8 actually what's really really cool is that by default dotnet publishes are now uh, defaulted to the release configuration. So let's actually see what that looks like. So let's just create a new .NET 8 project. So .NET new console, and then we'll specify the output and that output is CLI. So if we take a look at here, right? So if we go into the CLI project and then we get here, so we don't have a bin directory yet, but if I do a .NET publish and then don't specify anything else, so I don't have to add that release argument. As you can see, if I zoom in, our new Pro is release, right? So that's a really, really cool, like little bonus feature that makes our lives a bit better. We don't have to add that argument any longer. So if I hop out of this, that's really, really cool. And that's one uh, interesting feature that's been added to .NET 8. Another one is actually, let's re it requires one additional step. So let's actually take a look at it. So there's a new simplified output path. So if I go in here and let's just, as you can see here, and even if I was to do like a .NET publish, and then I'll specify an output. So let's just have that output be like publish, for instance. Right. So that's going to create a published directory at the root of my project. So as you can see here, and then obviously there's the bin, the release um, net 8.0. So one of the things that's really been uh, interesting, if you look at the conversations on the .NET repository, is that there's this new, this new idea of simplified output path. Because, you know, as you can see, if I... Uh, uh, open up the directories here. There's a bin there's bin pro folder, there's an object folder, and there's a publish folder. And you know, when you want to do like a clean of your project, sometimes you have to delete those uh, uh, folders, which can be cumbersome. So what the .NET team has started to experiment with is this idea of creating like one folder to hold all of these different artifacts. And it's uh, the 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 feature is called simplified output path. And to enable it, you have to do one additional thing. So you have to set that feature at um, the, the build props path. So if I um, do .NET new build props and then use artifacts, enter here, 
So that's going to create a new um, directory.build.props file. And let's just open this up in VS Code to see what all of this looks like. So VS Code dot. And what I'll do here is I'll pin this and that. So now I have on the left hand side, I have my command line. And on the right hand side, I have um, uh, I have Visual Studio Code. So as you can see here, there's artifacts file. Let's just zoom into VS Code a little bit. So I have artifacts, bin, and objects. So if I take a look at the directory build props, and take a look at this, minimize that for a second. So I have this artifact artifact path, and then the build the the directory of the file. So at the root, and then a folder called artifacts. So if I want to light this up, so all I have to do now is I just do a .NET. I just do a .NET publish, right? And then I can specify the publish directory, so I'll call it pub. So if I do that, if I do that, it's going to then create a folder, an artifacts folder. So I already have that pub folder, but let's actually delete all of these folders. Delete permanently. All right. So let's just clear out all this. And then if I run that again, let's just take out the uh, the output .NET publish. This is going to create a folder for me. So it's going to create the artifacts folder and inside of here. We have bin, we have the objects folder, we have publish. So this is actually really, really cool because it allows me to just delete like one folder. And that makes my life a bit easier as a developer instead of having to like go and delete multiple folders. And then maybe some of those folders are being in use. Um, you don't have to worry about that any longer. So that's one cool thing. So let's actually maximize this again. One additional feature that I think is pretty cool, it's not directly tied to the CLI, but you can see some of the outputs of it in the CLI. So there's been some new security auditing put into NuGet that allows us to um, get better visibility into security vulnerabilities with some of the dependencies that we're adding from NuGet. And how to light that up is we just do .NET add, and then we add our package. Actually, before we do that, we need to do one additional step. I almost forgot. We have to actually go in to our um, project file and then we need to add at the project level we need to add new get audit true right so let's minimize this and now if i was to do like dot net add package and then i can specify a package like for instance i know this package this newtonsoft.json package has security vulnerability in it it's an older version so um, it's safe to, to use as like a demo. So if I add this, right, it's, uh, it's, this is pretty interesting. So if I was to do like a .NET build, I get these messages that says, um, warning NU1902, and it says, Noonstuff package.json has a moderate se se severity vulnerability, right? So that's built right into the CLI. So if I do like, and I, this, I get this at .NET restore level as well. So if I do a .NET restore, I'll get that message that shows that this particular project, let me just do that up here so you can see it. Uh, you get that, that particular uh, package has a security vulnerability. So that's really, really valuable. And one thing that's really, really cool that's new to the CLI is uh, this there's a new extension to get like better output for some of our .NET um, commands. So if I do like .NET build and then I add that new flag, so dash TL, and this is actually going to give me like a like a, a more um, visible or a cleaner um, more and a more robust output. So as you can see here, that vulnerability is in there. And then because this is a project of, this is just one, a solution with just one project in it and doesn't have any references to other projects, it's a bit small. So let's actually take a look at a, a more uh, substantial example. So I'm gonna hop out of here and then I'm gonna go into um, a folder that a uh, project that I have called Presence Light, which um, is an open source project. And inside this project, there's referencing a bunch of other projects as well. So if I do that same command, that .NET build, and then specify that TL, as you can see, what it'll do is it'll actually start to list out all of the uh, dependencies that it has and it, it builds out. So this is just a, a better output when we are building .NET apps. And that's another cool thing that's coming to the CLI, so I'm excited for it. And then finally, one additional, um, and let's just hop out of here. One additional thing that's really, really cool with the CLI is that there's been a new command that's added. So if you're installing things via the CLI or installing things via Visual Studio, there might be some outdated um, versions of different frameworks or of different packages or different workloads. So you have the ability to clean those up and you can actually run that command. So it's .NET workload clean. 
And what .NET Workload Clean is, it'll actually tell you, like, so this machine has a pending reboot, so uh, it'll tell you some information about that. And then it tells you um, information about all of the different workloads that you have on your machine and if they need to be removed or not. So, but you can actually do a .NET Workload Clean dash all. And then it'll actually start to remove all of these workloads and it'll clean them up for us and, may, and get back to a point where we have the, the most updated versions of all these workloads, which is really helpful, especially if you're building like Maui applications, which have a bunch of different workloads that you need to install um, and to run, like you have Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst. And sometimes if you're installing the newer versions of .NET via the, you know, via the installer or Visual Studio, there are things that might be outdated. So, and once this is done, it shows you basically where you're at um, from a, an up-to-date standpoint. And after it's done, it removes all those workloads. So then um, you're at a point where everything, you can do um, a workload install and get the latest version. So it's basically just like a, a utility to clean out uh, workloads, which I think is really, really cool. And those are some of the cool things that I'm seeing that are coming out in the latest versions of .NET with the CLI. And I wanna know some of, the, some of the cool things that you're also building. So let me know in the comments below if you think some of these CLI commands are helpful for you. Um, and tell me what you're building with .NET 8. And I'm excited to hear from it. So that's it for me today. Hope you enjoy. Take care.